mission trip together this past week, and in the course of that, Josh had given his life to Jesus, and we were talking about boldness, and one of those steps in boldness is following through with believer's baptism, and so Josh has decided that he wants to follow that next step in his faith journey, and so Josh, have you given your life to Jesus? Yes. And do you desire to follow him in believer's baptism? Yes. Awesome. Let's run this way. All right, put your hands over your cups. I baptize you, my brother, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. <laughs> Pastor Carlos, will you lead us in prayer this morning? Lord God, we thank you, God, to be able to see the waters of baptism move again in our congregation, God. And we're just so uh, glad for the impact that your spirit did on Josh, God, as, even as he was on a mission trip last week, um, and just to follow you in believer's baptism. We're so grateful for that decision. I know his family is as well. Lord, I pray that as we continue in our worship and as we sing and praise your name, God, that we remember that all blessings come from you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand as we sing.
Good morning, church, both here in the room and online. It is great to celebrate Independence Day together, to celebrate the freedom that we have to, to worship together. Um, this morning, I am just, I'm so excited to worship with you, to worship with the kids next door for the next couple of hours. I'm just so excited to see God move every Sunday morning as we know he is faithful to do. Um, as a little bit of information this morning, we've got, we're celebrating communion this morning. So if you are in the room, in the, in the lobby, we've got the, the little cup and wafer, if you would, if you need to take a moment to step out and grab that, do that so that you're ready to go. Um, if you're watching online, go ahead and take a moment to go and gather some elements from around your house, something to eat and drink so that we can celebrate the, the death and resurrection and the salvation that we have in Christ together. And it's such an, an awesome ability that we have to do that in remembrance of who he is and what he's done for us. Um, as always, if you would take your, your phone and either text the word info or take a picture of that QR code in front of you, that will give you access to our digital bulletin, to the ability to give online, that will give you all the information you need to know. Um, one important thing that you need to know, I always mention you should know what's for, when, what's for meals on Wednesday, but for the month of July, our kitchen staff are taking a break. So... Wednesday's on you, and if you're at my house, that's a very sad day of trying to figure out what I'm going to eat this Wednesday. I may, I may lose weight this month as I you know, sit around in indecision. So if you would, go ahead and join us in, in worship this morning, and let's pray together. Dear God, I just want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for the freedom that we have to worship you openly and publicly. God, I pray that we take this opportunity daily to, to serve you and to follow you. God, I pray this morning that you move in this room and you move in those watching online. God, I just pray that your spirit comes down upon us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We've heard this song for many years, um, and it's America the Beautiful. But one of the interesting things is what the lyrics actually say. It's actually prayer-like. And it's amazing to see that how our nation was birthed out of a love for God and out of a love for prayer. So as we sing this song, or actually as you listen to this song real quick, um, just focus on what the words say. Oh, beautiful for patriot dreams that sees beyond the years thine alabaster O city's gleam undimmed by God. 
special day and it is a, a real privilege to have uh, July 4th our Independence Day to fall on a Sunday uh, where we can recognize just the 
the God-given gift that we have in being a part of this great country. Today, we do celebrate the independence of our country and really, in many ways, the, the power and the strength of our country to sustain for so long uh, what we enjoy as, uh, as a part of the United States of America. Do you remember these words? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, sometimes we kind of forget, we get to July 4th and we think it's a day for barbecues and we think it's a day for fireworks and we think it's a day for gathering family together and we think it's just a day for celebrating our country. But July 4th is the recognition of the anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. That's where those words come from. And so in many ways, we, we look at that today and we, and we focus on the independence that we have and what that means, that we have the opportunity as citizens to pursue uh, those things such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Today, though, as we celebrate our great, our great country, we come to a text in the book of 2 Peter where Peter is also celebrating a country. But it's not the United States of America. It is a country to come. It is a country to look forward to. It is a country where our freedoms will be even greater than what we experience here on this earth. So I want to read for you uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. We're going to start reading in verse 10. If you have your Bibles with me, you can open there. If not, be on the screen. Or you can follow along in our sermon notes by uh, using that QR code once again that's right in front of you. Here's what it says, 2 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be, bur will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be, dis thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Peter here is, is speaking of uh, some, some interesting things. He, he's talking about the end of all things. Now, here's what we know. You have not been to the end of all things because you're here. I have not been to the end of all things because I'm here. And what we know about Peter when he's writing this is he has not been to the end of all things because he's writing it. So therefore, he is writing about something that is to come and he is giving a warning to the people to be attentive and to be focused on what is coming. Uh, he gives some details that uh, may or may not be just absolutely, definitively, this is exactly how it all happened. So he's kind of general. He kind of, he kind of just describes things in a general way. The idea, uh, just so you'll know, the idea of the earth and the end coming in a blaze of fire is intentional, and it refers all the way back to Noah when God destroyed the entire earth with what? With water. And so God promised that he would never again destroy the earth with water and placed a rainbow in the sky as a seal and a sign of, of this promise. And so it is common then, referring back to that story, it is common for people to now make reference to the end of all things coming in fire because God promised that he would never again destroy everything with water. So, with that said, there are a few things that, that we can know uh, without question from this scripture, from what Peter describes. Let's talk in somewhat generalities, but there's some specificity to this as well. The first thing that we can know is that the end will come unexpectedly. Unexpectedly. He, he describes it as that the, the day of the Lord or the, the end will come like a thief. 
Now, let me just say, a thief is an unexpected guest, correct? If you've ever had to, have to deal with something like that, I remember a few years ago on a Saturday morning, we got up and we were headed to Upward Basketball, and, uh, and, and my wife went out to the car, and she opened the passenger seat, and everything that used to be in my glove box was in the passenger seat. See, I had done a bad thing the night before. I had forgotten to lock my car. And we have, from time to time, we'll have some people that just kind of walk down the street, and they just try every car, and they're looking for something open. And the, 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 beauty thing, the beautiful thing about that is when they, uh, when they do find something, they don't break anything. They just take everything. They, just, they don't break any windows or anything. They just take everything that's in your glove box. And so um, I, uh, I had a, a couple of uh, gas gift cards in there, and I had my library card, and I had my um, chaplain's badge from the hospital, and I had, you know, all of these different things. Now, the interesting thing, I'll give you the end of the story. The interesting thing is a few weeks later, I got a call from the police department. They had actually found in the mailbox of, of, a, of an empty house a few doors down, they had found all of my things. Now, I'll tell you what I think. I think they grabbed all of that and started walking down the street and saw Chaplin and said, we don't want to mess with God. I'm not going to mess with that. They just put it right there in the mailbox and said, we're not going to mess with any of that. So anyway, um, but regardless of that, a thief is not something that's expected. If a thief is expected, then it's not a thief, correct? It's a guest. Instead, a thief is something that we don't, aren't, aren't ready for. A thief is something that comes unexpectedly. Now, it's not something to fear. A thief is not something to fear. A thief is something to prepare for. <laughs> it's why we lock our doors. It's why we check our windows. It's why we activate our alarm. And then it's why we sleep securely. Because a thief is not something to be feared. A thief is something to prepare for. If a thief comes to your door and it's locked, they're probably going to go to the next door. And so what, what that tells us is that the end will come unexpectedly, but we need to prepare for that day so that while it might be unexpected, we are ready. Probably one of my family's favorite movies to watch at the, uh, at the Christmas season are the series of Home Alone movies. If you've ever seen the Home Alone movies, you know that Kevin, the hero in the story, he kind of gets in touch with these thieves. But boy, does he prepare, doesn't he? He prepares with all kinds of traps and, and, and uh, bodily damage. And I mean, it's, it's terrible what he does to these thieves. As a matter of fact, I, I saw a study that a doctor did on the movie Home Alone. They said that if Kevin would have actually done those things, those thieves would have died about seven times. But he prepares for them, and he's ready. No big deal, because he's prepared. As Christians, we need to prepare for the day that will come like a thief. The, thing, the next thing that we can see is that the end will come unexpectedly. Secondly, the end will come violently. The end will come violently. Let me read some of these uh, phrases that I read just a moment ago. The heavens will pass away with a roar. The heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved. The earth and the works will be exposed for what they are. The heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. Wow. I mean, I, I, it doesn't take a really big imagination to read that and go, that's going to be quite a day. It, what is all that going to look like? Honestly, I'm not sure. But if you will, just in your mind's eye, imagine looking up at the sky and seeing what you've always seen, seeing the birds and the clouds and the blue sky, and then all of a sudden, it's just gone. I, don't, I, can't, I can't like fathom that in my mind. Imagine looking up and the stars and the sun and, and the planets are just eliminated. I don't know what that looks like, but I can tell you it will be quite a change. It will be something that we have never truly imagined. The things that we've been used to all of a sudden will be drastically different. On July the 17th of 2013, at 2 a.m., I got a phone call at my house. It was a phone call from our uh, church alarm system saying, we need somebody to get up to the church. Apparently, a fire alarm has been tripped, and the fire department has been dispatched. Now, you need to understand that as the pastor, I am about third or fourth in line 
of people calling, uh, of the alarm system calling somebody. Uh, I, I'm really grateful for those people that are first, second, and third. Because from time to time, an alarm system can just trip for no reason. And so I woke up, got up, put some clothes on, put my, put my flip-flops on, kind of zombied out to the car thinking, oh, I cannot believe those other guys didn't answer the phone. Honestly, that was my thought. I got to my car and I got another phone call from the fire department saying, is somebody that is responsible for this church coming right now? We need somebody immediately. So I drove to the church and when I started to get closer, I could smell smoke. And when I got closer, I saw that all the doors had been opened and some of them broken in and there was smoke just billowing from the building. Not this building, but the office building right next door. And what had happened was there was a great fire and it had destroyed all kinds of offices and all kinds of resources. And I'll tell you what, I was not able to go in immediately because they were still in the process of dousing everything with water, which by the way, everything that the fire didn't uh, destroy, the fire department did. It just kind of, they just went in there with their hoses and they took care of everything, which I was grateful for because it meant that the building stood. But when I did get a chance to go in, I walked in and places that I had been and sat and worked in and studied in, had conversations in, had meetings in, they were all different. Everything that we were used to was changed. You see, when destruction happens, it is pretty overwhelming. There's really no way to recognize what used to be there with what is there. When the day of the Lord comes, everything will be changed, and it will be changed violently. Thirdly, we can see that the end will come completely. I have this kind of same, same story, but it says, all things are thus to be dissolved. <laughs> when the end comes, nothing will be reserved. There will be nothing that is like, well, you know what, I'm going to hold on to that. It says, no, that it will be a complete change. Everything will be changed. Everything will be affected. We will have no refuge except that we know Jesus is our Savior. Everything will be changed. The end will come completely. So those are a few things that we can see in, in, in a more general way, in a more uh, principled way uh, about the end. So then Peter takes another step. He says, okay, well, here's the end. It will come like a thief. It will be very unexpected. It will come with fire. It will be very violent. It will be, uh, everything will be affected. It will come completely. So what should you do? What should you do right now as a result of the truth and the expectancy of the day of the Lord that is coming? What should you do? Well, he offers a few very good suggestions. Number one, if you're going to live in light of the end, if you're going to live in the understanding that the end will come unexpectedly, violently, completely, first thing you should do is you should live holy and godly lives. You see, there's nothing to be worried about if we're consistently living as if God were to return in that moment. It's a really good check on your system and a really good check on your behavior if over the course of the day, repeatedly, you were to ask yourself this question. If Jesus were to return right now, would I be proud or would I try to hide? Would I be pleased with him returning right now or would I try to hide what I am doing? Would it be okay for him to show up in this moment with, what, with my behavior, with my attitude, with my actions, with my words, with my uh, mindset? Would it be okay for Jesus to return right now? Or would I want to say, oh, thanks, wait just a second. I'll be with you in a minute. And maybe we need to clean things up a little bit. That's a really good check on our system. 
Are we ready for him? Because it says that in light of his return, we should consistently and constantly live holy and godly lives. It means exactly what it says. Holy, godly. This really confirms our calling. It confirms our Christianity. It confirms our message. It confirms our, our lordship. This shows that our Christianity is more than just a badge to wear when it's convenient. It means that our Christianity needs to extend further than just on Sunday. We need to live out our Christianity every single day. And when we falter, and we're going to, remember we talked about this last week? When we falter, when we fail, we identify the sin, we confess it before God, and you remember the word? We repent. We turn away from our sin and turn back towards God. We identify, confess, and we repent. It doesn't mean that we're never going to make mistakes, but when we do stray away from God, we identify, we confess, and we repent. We move back towards Jesus. We need to live holy and godly lives. He says in light of the end, we also need to share the gospel. Now, this is an interesting statement because it says that we are waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God. Peter is, in many ways, proposing that our activity and our lives somehow have a bearing on the second coming of Jesus. Let me remind you of another passage of Scripture. This is Jesus speaking back in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, what's known as the Olivet Discourse. Basically, that means that he was on the Mountain of Olives and he was preaching. Olivet Discourse. It was something that he was telling people about. And if you were to read through uh, Matthew chapter 24, what, would you, what you would see is you would see Jesus talking about the end time, about Jesus talking about when he will return and giving lots of instruction. And this is one of the things that he says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. He says, then they, meaning the people that are against me, they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, speaking to his disciples and his followers. And you will be hated by all all nations for my name's sake. By the way, that should be a very good comfort to us, meaning that if we're struggling in our lives and people are kind of against us, we're in really good company because Jesus said that's exactly what's going to happen. Moving on, he said, and then many will fall away and betray one another and even hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. We've talked for weeks about false teachers and false prophets. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And then this last verse, listen to what it says. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. Did you see that? This gospel will be proclaimed to all nations as a testimony. And then the end will come. You don't have to raise your hand, but I think I know the answer to this. How many of us here are looking at the world, looking at the situations, looking at the circumstances? watching social media, or just watching media in general. And when you watch things and you see the disaster and you see the destruction, you see the attitude of people and you see the human experience, you see the human condition, how many of us have a tendency to look at that and say, Jesus, come back today. Jesus, I'm ready. Don't wait any longer. Did you know that you actually have an opportunity in your daily activity to actually quicken or hasten the coming of Christ. The Bible says that the message will be preached to all nations, and then the end will come. We have an opportunity as our, our daily activity to proclaim the good news to everyone. Because let's just be honest. When you have good news, you want to share it. I know you all knew this was coming. But this week, my Mississippi State Bulldogs 
won the national championship in baseball. I've been telling you for years that I'm a big fan, and it didn't matter. And honestly, it doesn't matter any more today than it did then. But we finally have a national championship that is not in Frisbee golf. And I'm so thankful. And can I just tell you, all week this week, since Wednesday night, I have walked around hoping that somebody, I have worn my Mississippi State gear, I have worn my Mississippi State shirt, and I have gone out in the public, and I have just been like, somebody say something to me. Because I want to share, I want to talk about it. And you know what? Nobody cares. <laughs> Not a one person. Actually, several of you have mentioned and several of you have reached out and thank you so much. But it has been a, it's been, I, you know, here's the thing though. And I, I hope that you can see this transition. When you have good news, you want to talk about it. You want to share with somebody. You want somebody else to know. You want somebody to join with you in that. You want somebody to be on board with you, Right? Listen, we've got way better news than a national championship. We've got the key to life. We've got the key to eternity. We need to share it with somebody. He says, you need to live holy and godly lives. You need to share the gospel. And thirdly, he says, you need to look forward to eternal life. He talks about the fact that we are looking forward to a new heavens and a new earth. Now, help me make this turn. My friend, we live in a great country. We have a wonderful benefit in being citizens of the United States of America. We have a great freedom in the way that we live, a freedom to worship, a freedom to gather, a freedom to express our opinion, a freedom to vote, a freedom to participate. We have a great freedom. We have a great country. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Please hear this turn, though. As great as our country is, as great as this nation is, it pales in comparison with what is to come. We have a wonderful freedom, and I can't understand why anyone would not want to be a part of our country. I can't understand why anyone would not want to be a part of what we enjoy and what we appreciate. But my friend, let's make sure that we are not holding our flags so high that they don't see the cross. Let's make sure that we are using our freedoms for the right that it has given to us to proclaim the name of Jesus and to let people know that we have the freedom to tell you about Jesus, about what he has done for us, about what he can do for you. We need to look forward to a greater country, to a greater nation, to a greater citizenship. As we, listen, over these next, over this next day, over these next hours, as we gather with family, as we gather with friends, and as we watch and listen and share, and as we uh, just enjoy being together and appreciating the freedom that we have and celebrating our country, please, friend, let's celebrate our patriotism by overwhelmingly celebrating our Christianity really about who we are in Christ because you know when you get to those life liberty and the pursuit of happiness those are great things aren't they but the only way that we can truly have life is through Christ the only way that we can truly have liberty and freedom is in Christ the only way that we can truly pursue happiness is in Christ it's not because of our declaration of independence. It's because of our declaration of dependence on who he is, what he's done. We have an opportunity to do just that. So this morning, as we take just a few minutes to respond and to, to consider where we stand before the Lord, I just want to ask you to take, take this time. And, and, and as we recognize and understand what God has given to us in being a part of the United States of America, let's focus our attention on who Christ is, what he has done for us, so that we can prepare our hearts and minds to receive communion together.
If you're here in the room as we prepare, you can go ahead and grab that, uh, that cup that you had and turn it over to the bread side. And as you pray, just begin to peel that off so that when we come back, we can share that communion meal together. Let's take just a few moments. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for what he has in store for us as we celebrate him. Honestly, I, I can think of no better practice for us to partake in on Independence Day than for us to come and to remember what Christ has done for us by taking communion together. This is a memorial meal. It represents the body and the blood of Christ. It remembers the sacrifice that he made and it looks forward to the day of his coming. So every time we come together for this moment, what we are doing is we are recognizing the freedom that we have in Christ. And we are celebrating who we are in Him so that then we might be able to share Him with others. So if you'll take that bread and just recognize that it is the body of Christ that was broken for us. On the night that he was betrayed, he gave it to his disciples, broke it, gave thanks for it, and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. If you'll peel the top off of that juice, turn that over and recognize that this is the blood of Christ. That's what he said. It represents the blood of Christ and, and it allows us to recognize who he is and the sacrifice that he made. It was his blood that was shed that paid the price for our sins. It's because of the blood that Jesus shed that we can come to this moment and recognize that we are forgiven. We are free in him. So as we take the, the cup, let us be reminded of that night when he said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your direction in our lives. Thank you for the privilege of being able to meet with you as we have celebrated and worshiped today. And Father, I pray that in everything that has been done and everything that will be done, God, that you will continue to show us your grace, your truth, your love. God, let our minds and hearts be drawn to you. Thank you for all the things that you've given to us. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you and following you. And God, would you lead us in a powerful way to dedicate our lives even more fully to you, to share the message of Christ and to live those holy and godly lives as we look forward to the day of your coming and as we anticipate the beauty of our existence, our city, our nation, the new heavens and the new earth that is to come. We look forward to all the things that you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Well, once again, thank you for joining us today at Stetson Baptist Church Online. We were so grateful that you had an opportunity to join with us in this way. I know that for many of you that are watching, maybe you're out of town, maybe you're on the road, or maybe you're in your home. And for a lot of you, you would love to be here in person. I, I, would, I want you to know that we would love for you to come. We'd love for you to be a part of what God's doing as we gather together. But in the meantime, we are so thankful that we have this way that we can gather together in a virtual streaming way. I'm grateful that you were a part of today's service. A couple of quick things before we leave. First of all, we would love for you to check into this service if you haven't done so already by texting the word check to 386 400 Nine 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 one. Also, we would love to uh, let you know about the things that are coming up and the things that are ongoing in our church by texting the word INFO to 386-400-9991. On there is also a digital connect card in our digital bulletin. And then finally, if you text the word GIVE to 386-400-9991, we would love for you to have access so that you can give online. Other ways that you can give to our church is uh, you can use your bank's bill pay system or you can drop a, uh, a, a, an offering by the church office any day this week. We are so thankful that you were here today. I pray that you will take the words that we have shared and the message that we've shared and that the impact of that message will be life-changing for you and it will be something that you'll be able to apply to your life every day this week. Also, please know in this time as we are continuing to work through this process, we love you, we care about you. And if there's any way that our church can serve you and your family, we would love to. Just give us a call, 386-734-1991. That's a different phone number. Or you can uh, actually email us at, it goes to all of our pastors, info at stetson.church. That's distributed to all of our pastors. So we would love to get in touch with you in that way. Know that we care about you. Know that we love you. It's the summertime. We've got a lot of things going on. We just are so appreciative of your prayers. And we're very much looking toward the fall where ministry is going to kick off full steam. We look forward to what God is doing in your life. And we can't wait to see you again. God bless you. Thanks for being a part of this service. We hope to see you again next week.